Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I've been having a lot of nice locality boas lately. It's been a really busy last few months with a lot of nice babies on the ground. And I've been getting a lot of interest from you guys about acquiring some boas. And yes, many of these babies will be rehomed in the next few months. Today I want to go over how you can acquire a boa if you're interested in acquiring one of my 2022 locality boa babies. I'm going to go over my terms of sale and then I'm going to answer some of the many questions that I've been getting from you guys about this whole process. So if you're interested in acquiring one of my boas, be sure to stay tuned. So as you know, it's been busy, very busy lately. Um, I've been spending a lot of time getting these baby boas up and running. You know, many hours of my day are currently spent on the boas, which is great. You know, this is why I do this. And the summer is, of course, a very busy time for boa breeders, you know, with all these babies being born and, um, you know, all the, the things that we have to do. I've also been getting an awful lot of questions from people lately about the boas. So I'm not always able to get back to people right away. I try my best to always answer your questions, but sometimes they just get buried in this avalanche of other questions. I get questions via email, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and YouTube. And sometimes I just can't keep track of all these questions. So uh, bear with me. I'm gonna do my best to answer everyone's questions as best I can. But you know, the purpose of some of these videos is to just answer questions that a lot of people have in common that they always keep asking. So hopefully this video will shed some light on that. Of course, I had to get out one of my boas for the video, give you guys some eye candy to look at. And although a lot of my boas were first time parents this year, unfortunately this guy was not one of them. This is a anerythristic Paraguana Peninsula boa. And although I did pair him up with an anerythristic female, Unfortunately, it didn't work, and I don't have any baby Paraguana Peninsula boas this year. You know, this was what litter I was really hoping on, but it doesn't always work. So hopefully next year I'll be successful. Sometimes I have to pair up uh, animals multiple years before I'm finally successful. So if you're interested in possibly acquiring a different type of boa other than that Paraguana, the first thing to do is to look at my terms of sale. And this is a document that outlines pretty much everything important about the uh, whole interaction with the buyer and the seller. And I actually have the terms of sale listed on a Google Docs available to everyone. I'm gonna put the link to the Google Docs with my terms of sale right under the description of this video. So if you're interested, go review the terms of sale. But I'm briefly gonna go over the key points in this video. Okay, so the first, animal availability. Animals are sold on a first come, first serve basis. I don't do waiting lists, I don't do holds. Um, I think that the most fairest way to give everyone who wants, possibly wants a boa, is first come, first serve. Because I tried doing waiting lists in the past, and I would spend a lot of time and effort, you know, contacting people. And then they either didn't get back to me or they told me they were no longer interested. And it just took away possible uh, opportunities for other people to acquire these boas. So I don't do waiting lists for that purpose. Uh, the boas are available for sale once they're established. So it typically takes about a month and a half to two months for the baby boas to be ready for sale after they're born. So they have to feed at least four times or so. Typically, I like to see them shed twice. They'll shed once about, you know, uh, 10 days after birth, and then they'll shed again about a month and a half or so. Okay, photos. I try to get photos of all my boas available uh, whenever possible. And for this year, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm setting up a photo sharing site where you will be able to go and you can see the individual boas for sale on this photo sharing site. I don't know the exact site yet, I'm still working on it. But you can go check it out. I'll have some information and prices also listed on this photo sharing site. So as you may know in the past, I used Fauna Classifieds. And of course that's not the most user-friendly or streamlined website. I got a lot of people you know, commenting about they weren't able to use it. Um, the messaging on Fauna is also kind of clunky, so I don't really like that. I may um, also have Fauna ads up in addition to this photo sharing site, 
but I will always list my email. So rather than contacting me through Fauna, you can contact me through my email and it'll make the communication much easier and more streamlined. But I also intend to have this photo sharing site. I don't do Morph Market, I don't do King Snake, I just do Fauna Classifieds. Okay, so I will always have, whenever possible, photos of the actual animal for sale. And this will be the case, if not for all animals, at least for the higher end animals, you know, true red tails, any of the more expensive animals that all look different in a litter. You know, as you may know, in a litter of true red tails, you can have lots of different appearances. And I know some people prefer one look over another. Um, so there will be individual pictures. However, for other types of boas, for example, the cocker key boas, they all look pretty much the same. They all have the same appearance. There's not a lot of variability. So for those types of boas, I may have a representative photo and um, you may not be able to see a photo of the exact animal. However, if time permits, I might try to take actual individual photos because I know people sometimes want them. But remember, it just takes time and bandwidth, and I just have so many things to do now, as you can imagine, with this YouTube channel and all my boas and everything else, that you know, taking all these photos is just you know, yet another thing I have to do. Okay, payment. Payment is by check or money order only. Okay, so uh, I will give you my address. You can ship, you can send in the snail mail, US mail, the check or money order, personal check, bank check, or Postal money order is actually preferred. I don't take credit cards. I don't take you, um, PayPal. I just, you know, I've had some negative experiences with those. Okay, pop, the payment plans. I don't do payment plans with some small exceptions, but typically I don't. Um, you know, for very high end expensive items or boas or, you know, boas that aren't going to be ready for a while and it's, you know, um, I made agreements with somebody. I might do a payment plan, but usually I don't do the payment plans. Okay, shipping and packing. So I've been shipping and packing reptiles for many years and I have a lot of experience and I pride myself on the, how careful I am with it. Um, I ship by FedEx priority overnight. So basically I will drop off the animal securely packaged at my local FedEx ship center. Uh, the afternoon or evening before and then it arrives at the ship center near you uh, typically by 10 a.m. the following day sometimes it's like noon or if you're in a really really out of the way location it could be as late as 4 30 p.m. but for most locations it arrives at your ship center by 10 a.m. the next day so it's the animals in transit a relatively short amount of time uh, usually I will only ship to a FedEx ship center okay that way you'll uh, the, the animal doesn't have to go on the FedEx truck once it arrives and get exposed to more delay and more risk. I just am no worried about the animal might be cooking on this FedEx truck if it gets hot or something like that. Um, so you have to let me know your nearest FedEx ship center and it can't be just a FedEx counter like at a your grocery store or you know uh, some of the uh, like the mail mailboxes etc and some of these little you know, shipping stores have FedEx counters. Mm -hmm. Has to be the ship center, which is a local hub. Okay, so look it up. Look up your local hub. Um, if you are in doubt, I can let you know what your local hub is for FedEx. But you'll have to go there. Uh, depending on where you live, the local hub could be anywhere from, you know, 10 or 20 minutes to like an hour drive. So just be prepared for that. And I will let you know, of course, when the animal is going to shift, make arrangements, make sure you're available to pick it up. Um, I don't ship if it's too hot or too cold, so there's a possibility if the weather's not cooperating that your shipment might be delayed. Although, you know, with the fall approaching, we have a, a window of at least a few months for good shipping. Typically, I can ship until like late November, early December, depending on the weather. Okay, so live arrival is guaranteed as long as you pick up at your FedEx ship center. Um, if you have any issues or anything goes wrong with the shipment, let me know ASAP and I'll make it right. So I stand behind my animals in the sales and I want to make sure that you're 100% satisfied. And so please reach out to me with any questions, comments, you know, anything that I can do to make it a better experience. However, please do your research ahead of time. Okay, research the husbandry needs for the boa. 
you know, make sure that you have an enclosure set up and that you're ready to give the animal the high level care that it needs. Um, part of the reason I set up these, uh, this channel and I'm, I do these videos is just so people can get information and be better prepared for you know, keeping a pet boa, as well as have a better uh, decision about what type of boa that they should get. So, um, you know, please do your homework ahead of time. You know, I'll help you with any, any way I can, but the, ultimately the care of the animal is your responsibility. Those are the highlights of my terms of sale. And once again, I have the terms of sale available on a Google Docs site. So the link to the terms of sale is in the description under this video. Please read the terms of sale before you buy one of my boas. I'm gonna ask you if you did, and it's just important that you know what you're getting into uh, before you do the sale, just so that there's no uh, surprises. Thought I'd just grab a new boa. This is actually a successful breeder this year. This is a Prometheus Bloodline male, a holdback from 2016. And uh, it's kind of crushing my finger. This guy is really muscular. But this guy had a nice litter of 10 babies that was born just last week. So really uh, happy with this litter. These babies are going to be ready when they're available. I'm guessing probably sometime around October or so. Okay, so those are the terms of sale. I wanted to just answer some questions on a variety of different sales topics that you guys have been asking that aren't really covered by the terms of sale. And so in no particular order, just have them kind of written down here. Okay, so question one. I need a female tar humara boa for my breeding group. How can I guarantee getting one from you? Okay, I get a lot of questions like this about someone needs a certain boa. Um, you know, I understand that these boas are hard to get and I really sympathize with you. You know, I wish there were more of them. But, you know, the reality is that there's just not a lot of locality boas available right now because not a lot of people are breeding them and there's, the demand has just gone up quite a bit in the last few years. I can't guarantee that you're going to get one of my boas. The best way to get one of my boas is to watch these videos, follow my different social media uh, just for announcements, and then be ready to buy the boa as soon as they go on sale. In many cases, my boas sell out within hours. so. It pays to you know pay attention and to anticipate when they're going to go on sale. I know some people do waiting lists and I don't, but in my opinion, the most fair way to get everybody equal access to the boas that they want is the first come first serve uh, method. And you know, as I've said in the past, I tried doing waiting lists and it was just kind of a frustrating exercise for everyone involved. Okay, so second question. Can I send money to hold a boa? So no, you can't send money until the animals are ready, okay? I don't take money ahead of time. Um, it's just, it's too much to, for me to keep track of, to be quite honest. I just have so much to keep track of. I don't wanna have to keep track of who's paid me what and you know how much money I have from a certain person. Um, I'm a one-man operation. I don't have like record keepers and accountants and business people. I'm doing the boa husbandry. I'm doing the feeding. I'm doing the cage cleaning. I'm doing the breeding trials. I'm doing all the communications. I'm doing the production of these videos and I'm doing all the marketing and as well as packing and shipping. So it's really super busy. I just don't have time to keep track of who's paid what money um, until the animals are ready. And so once an animal is ready to go, then you can send the money to buy the animal. Okay, third question. What are the prices going to be on your Tar Humara boas or whatever boa uh, of interest? So right now, I haven't determined the prices on most of my boas. To be honest, I just wanna get them feeding and established. I have kind of a ballpark range in my head, you know, based on what the boa market has been like lately. And if you're interested in keeping track of the boa market, I highly recommend you go to the different classified sites, Fauna, Morph Market, and um, kingsnake.com. See what the animals are at least being listed for, if not selling for. You know, also sometimes on Facebook, people have boa groups, and sometimes they have ways of, you know, selling them there, even though it's kind of discouraged. So you can usually find out what a, the market value of a boa is. Um, from these sites. And the prices have been going up lately, so I anticipate the prices of my boas are gonna be higher this year 
than in previous years. You know, not surprisingly, prices of everything have been going up. It's been costing more and more for rodents and for electricity and for all the supplies that I need to produce these animals. I mean, even the shipping has gone up. I just went to get a FedEx shipping label yesterday. It was $95 for shipping. I mean, shipping used to be, a few years ago, around $50. So it's just, everything has gotten expensive, unfortunately. I wish we didn't have inflation. I wish these prices weren't going up, but unfortunately that's the reality. So if you go to these different sites, you can see the market value. I price my animals right at market value pretty much. You know, sometimes I might have an animal a little higher or a little bit lower than market value, but it's likely to be within, I don't know, 10, 20% of the market value. Okay. Question number four. Which of these boas would you recommend for me? A Qualki boa or a Tarahumara boa? Uh, both, actually. So I don't, I like all my boas. Um, this is why I do these videos is to share information about them with you and to kind of go over the pros and cons of each different boa and what each different boa entails. I have a huge library of, of videos on all the different types of locality boas I deal with. So go check out some of those videos. I've got comparison videos. In fact, I think I did a comparison video of Tarahumara and Kral Key. Um, so check out these videos, okay? Decide for yourself. I can't tell you which boa is gonna be better for you. You know, because your situation is different and everyone has a slightly different situation. But I would check them out, make up your own mind. A lot of it is just personal preference about what type of boa you prefer. You know, ultimately, like I said, both because they both are really great uh, species to work with with a lot of pros to them. Okay, next question. I'm thinking of getting a boa from you. Will you please call me to discuss what type? Okay, so I don't have time to call people unsolicited. Okay, sometimes I call people, you know, when the sales process is going or if there's like a specific question or issue. But at this point, I, as much as I love to discuss boas with people, and as much as, you know, stimulating, I, the conversation would probably be, I just don't have the bandwidth to call all these people. So, you know, sorry, like I said, I'm a one man operation and uh, I, probably can't call you if you ask me to call you. So don't take it personally. It's just, I just don't have the uh, bandwidth to do that. Okay, next question. Will you get back to me before the babies are on sale? As similar to the fact that I don't have the bandwidth to call people that I'll they send me the phone number, I don't have the bandwidth to get back to every individual person telling them when the boas are on sale. That's why I set up this channel and why I do these videos. Okay, so Unfortunately, I don't, I may not be able to contact you. Sometimes I, you know, if someone is really persistent and they've been, you know, really asking again and again, I try whenever possible to let people know, you know, because I, I feel for you guys and I, I love BOAs and I know how much people want them, but I can't contact everybody, you know, before the BOAs go on sale. So please watch these videos. Okay, follow me on the different social media. That's the best way to know when the BOAs are going to be on sale. Next question, where do you list your BOAs? So as I mentioned, this channel is the best way to keep up with information about what BOAs are gonna be available. Uh, as I mentioned, I list typically on Fauna Classifieds, but I'm also going to have a photo sharing site set up with pictures of the individual BOAs and prices, just so that people can go to this and see it all without having to deal with Fauna Classifieds, because I know that it's uh, not a great website. And you can look at these pictures, you can see the information, and then my email will be there so you can email me and you know with any questions you have or if you want to purchase one of my animals. And the um, link to the Fauna Classified site is on right now under this the description of the video. I'll put the link to my photo sharing site as soon as I have that set up. Hopefully in the next few weeks, but you know, I have a very long list of tasks I have to do right now with all these baby boas. Okay, link to the, okay, I answered the next question, link to the fauna site. Uh, next question, I would like three female Tarahumara boas for my breeding group. I do, I'm not interested in any males. Okay, so when I have my litters, uh, the sex ratio is kind of all over the place. 
Sometimes I have like a 50-50 sex ratio. I might have a litter of 12 and I have six females, six males. In some cases, I might have nine females and three males, you know, female heavy. I might have nine males and three females. Okay, I've pretty much seen it all. So sometimes I don't have very many females available. And there's kind of this weird thing with boa breeders, the people getting into breeding boas. They have this idea they'll just buy a whole bunch of females and they'll have one super stud male that's going to go from enclosure to enclosure, you know, doing his business and making the babies. And then, you know, six months later, all these babies are going to pop out. The so boa breeding doesn't work like that. You need males. Okay. I would say to, you know, have at least as many males as you have females. In some cases, you may even want to do multiple males to ensure your uh, odds of success. Whenever possible, I like to uh, have, give people the opportunity to buy pairs just so they'll have the possibility of breeding these animals in the future and, you know, continue this whole boa breeding uh, endeavor. Um, some cases when I have a lot of extra females, if I've, I've got like, you know, 10 females and three males, extra females might be available. But this is usually pretty rare. So typically if I have um, uh, excess males, I'll only sell females as part of a pair. I'll sell a lone male, but if you want a female, you're going to have to buy a pair. In some cases, I might have uh, animals individually priced, like with my two red tails. In that case, um, females would be sold separately. So um, the price, of course, just depends on the quality and how many of each sex that I have. Um, but typically, if I have a small litter, you know, which is the case with a lot of the island boas like the Tarahumara, you're probably not going to be able to buy three females from me. Okay. Next question. Will your baby boas be eating freeze thawed before they're shipped? So whenever possible, I try to get animals on frozen thawed as early as possible. That being said, I can't guarantee that all animals are going to be eating frozen thawed. And in fact, with the dwarf island boas like the Tarahumara, Kralki, you know, Pearl Island, things like that, it's very difficult to get them feeding on frozen thawed before they're about six months to a year old. So there's a pretty good chance that if you buy a dwarf boa for me, it's not going to be eating frozen thawed. You're going to have to start it with live uh, animals, live fuzzy mice or rat pinkies. And then I expect it will switch to frozen thawed pretty quickly, usually within a few months. Um, with the true red tails and you know some of the other Colombian boas, typically those are easier to get on frozen thawed and they'll probably be on frozen thawed. But please let me know, ask me if you're interested and I can tell you the feeding history of the animal. I'll also include a feeding record card with every boa uh, indicating the history of what it has eaten so far. Next question, when will you have North Brazilian red tail boas? So I attempted to breed North Brazilians this year. Unfortunately, I was not successful. So I can't say definitively when I'll have those. And the same is true for a number of other boas like the Paraguana Peninsula boas and um, Argentine boas, for example. These animals I'm going to try again next year, but there's no 100% guarantee. So Fingers crossed I'll have North Brazilian and all the other boas next year. In reality, it's highly unlikely that all these litters are going to take. This is part of breeding boas. Okay, next question. Do you accept PayPal? No, I don't accept PayPal or credit cards. Payment is by check or money order sent to me. Okay, next question. Are you interested in trades for some of my boas? Um, so I don't I'm not doing any trades at this point. I, my collection is now closed. Okay, um, I've had very few animals come in over the last few years. If you've been following the channel, you know I did get a new red tail. It was kind of unplanned and it was a rehome. Um, other than that animal, over the last four or five years, the only animals I've gotten have been holdbacks. Okay, so I'm not going to add any new animals. Actually, it wasn't for, I think it was two or three years because I did buy some animals in 2020. But I think that was the last time I purchased an animal. Everything else was holdback. So I'm not um, planning at this point on 
adding any new animals. As much as I love all the other boas out there that I don't have, I have my limits and um, I'm not planning on having any trades or any new animals come in. One more question, and this is really more of a comment that someone had than a question. And I think the person intended it as a joke, but it came across as a little unusual, a little unbalanced, if you will. So the comment was, I would sell a lung to get one of your Suriname red tail boas. So I don't want anyone to be selling lungs or any other organs, um, or you really doing anything with income that's not discretional income. This you shouldn't be spending your rent money or your money for food or your you know your kids' education on boas. Uh, you know I love boas. I think they're well worth the money, but they're a luxury and they're discretionary. Okay, so don't be selling any organs or doing anything desperate. Um, you know to get money to buy one of my animals. In fact, I really hope that if you're gonna be buying one of my animals, you have kind of a stable situation and you have money that you're going to be able to use for the housing and care of the animal because you can expect that over the course of an animal's lifetime, a bow's lifetime, you're gonna spend several times the purchase price just on food and you know consumables like that, as well as when you get your setup, you're probably gonna spend at least the purchase price of the boa on a nice cage and heater and all that other stuff. So um, don't be selling any lungs, okay? And I don't even know, do people buy lungs for transplants? I guess they do, but anyway. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and thought it was uh, somewhat useful. If you have any more questions about the sales, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.